Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty good God we serve. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you would, while you're standing, I want you to do me a favor and just stretch your hands towards heaven. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. These are your spiritual antennas. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. And while you got your hands stretched wide, I want you to take 60 seconds and open up your mouth because wide mouths open wide doors. Closed mouth get closed doors. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to thank him for who he is. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him because he kept you. He watched over you. It should have been me. It could have been me. Outdoors, no food, no shelter. But every time I turn around, he keeps on doing great things for me. Come on. Open up your mouth all over this house and begin to bless him. Begin to thank him. Begin to love on him. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Thank him for who you are. Thank you for what you're about to do. Where there is no expectation, there will be no manifestation. But where there is great expectation, you will see a manifestation. Open up your mouth and glorify Him. Come on, open up your mouth and magnify Him. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Let the glory of the Lord rise among you. Let the glory of the Lord rise among you. Thank you. Thank you. I decree and I declare that I'm healed. I decree and I declare that I am set free. I decree and I declare things just got better. Come on, all over this house, open up your mouth. Create an atmosphere that everybody on your road can be blessed. Create an atmosphere that everything connected to you is about to be blessed. I dare you open up your mouth and bless them. I dare you open up your mouth and bless them. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory, 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 glory. I don't know about you, but I came tonight to tell you that a miracle is a sign to you. I came to tell you there's a miracle with your name on it. But you got to act like you know that everything. Let me say it again. You got to act like you know that everything is going to be all right. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to find somebody in here and I need you to walk to them and tell them, say, neighbor, you have nothing to worry about. Tell them God have taken over every situation. Come on, I need you to walk to somebody else and tell them you have nothing to worry about. God has taken over every situation. Now tell them, say, I decree and I declare total cancellation of every demonic activity against my mind against my family against my success i speak total cancellation somebody shout it's cancel it's cancel it's cancel i speak total cancellation glory to the lamb of god praise the name of jesus while you're yet standing on your feet, it gives me a great privilege, pleasure, and an honor to celebrate the very angel of this house. Can you help me love on the greatest pastor on this side of glory? Oh, y'all playing with it. Come on. Love is is what love does. 
Let's honor God for Pastor David Wright, your pastor, God's man, God's visionarian. And listen, you can't love on Pastor Wright without appreciating the very vivacious woman of God that is by his side. The fragrance of this house, Lady G. Come on, can y'all do better than that? While you're standing, if you would, I want you to grab your Bibles and let's go here to the book of Amos. The book of Amos chapter 9. I believe that no saint should be left behind, so therefore if you're standing beside someone that didn't bring their Bible, be ever so kind to allow them to look on. Hallelujah. But when you get there, I want you to scream, I got it. Amos chapter 9, starting at verse 13 to 15. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to see pages turning, even though we're living in such a world of technology. There's nothing like having that good paper Bible. Anybody still believe in the paper Bible? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 13 to 15. And the word of the Lord reads to us, Behold, the days come. Say of the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of the grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. And they shall build their waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be poured up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. I want to read, to you, read this to you in the Message Bible. It says just like this. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. I need somebody to open up their mouth and shout, it won't be long now. It's God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look blessings blessings like the wine pouring off the mountains and hills I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I will plant them, plant them on their own land. They will never again be uprooted from the land I have given them your God say so kind father we thank you for the word of your wonder the wonder of your word let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord thou strength and thou redeemer in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I want to encourage you tonight and I want to speak to you to let you know that it, it won't be long now. I want you to, to shout back to me, it won't be long now. Come on, y'all, you, you got to say it. One thing I believe that if you don't create an environment of expectation, you will never have a manifestation. So I need you to activate the faith in your mouth and speak it into the atmosphere because the Bible says speak those things that be not as though they were. I need you to say it like you mean it, mean it like you really know that things are getting ready to happen and shout, it won't be long now. 
My dear brothers and my dear sisters, here we go. We see from the book of Amos, Amos begins to talk to us. It said, Behold the days, watch this, shall come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. I came to talk to some people here tonight that have been in a place where you feel like you've been overworked, underpaid, and unappreciated. I came to talk to somebody that feels like, you know what, I've been doing all that I can do, but it seems like the harder I'm working, the less of results I'm getting. Is there anybody here that can attest tonight that said, Brother Preacher, I know what you're talking about because I have been the one standing in the gap, holding my family, holding my ministry. I've been the one standing in the gap, holding everything together, and it seems like I've been the one that's been mistreated. I've been the one that's been talked about. I've been the one that people ostracize, criticize. I'm the one that they have abused and misused. But I came here tonight to tell somebody that it won't be long now. God is getting ready to flip the script. God is getting ready to change your position. God is getting ready to rearrange your posture. Because he said, behold, that means I got to look again. I want to encourage somebody to tell you tonight, look again. I know the enemy have brought so many disappointing things in your life. He have brought so many disappointing feelings to your life. But I want to tell you, look again again. I need somebody just to look at a neighbor close by you and tell them, take another look. Take another look. Take, uh, Lady G, take another look. It, I want to tell somebody, it's not bad as you think it is. It is as bad as you seem. But take another look because he said, behold the days. I want to encourage you to let you know that you got more blessed days than you got suffering days. You got more days of victory ahead than you have days of pain. Somebody just need to encourage yourself and say better days are ahead. Better days. Better days. Better days are ahead. So here it is. It said behold the days shall come. I need you to speak over yourself and shout I have days of victory. Yes, yes, yes. I got months of victory. I got years of victory that God is about to do something phenomenal. God is about to do something substantial. Behold the days shall come. Watch this that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. I came to tell somebody tonight this message ain't for you that been lazy. This message is not for you that been complaining. This message is not for you that got a problem with everything. But this is the message for those that got a mind to work. This is the message for those that say you know what whatever it takes I'm all the way in because I know that I got days that I'm getting ready to reap what I have sown. Understand that as you're in this great, watch, how many years of this church anniversary it is, Lady G? 31 years. Understand that this church has been in existence 31 years and the only way that this church has been able to exist is because there were people that said, I won't quit. There were people that said, I won't walk away. Yes, there were many that started out with you. There's many that fell by the wayside. But here he speaks and he says, listen, yes indeed, it won't be long now. I need you to get it in your mind. I need you to get it in your spirit. I need you to catch it prophetically that it won't be long now that I'm getting ready to see God do what I've been asking him to do. I'm getting ready to see God manifest. I'm getting ready to see God give me a record-breaking miracle. Somebody shout, record-breaking miracles. Uh, some of you didn't say it like you really expected. But come on, open up your mouth and shout record-breaking miracles. I got a record-breaking deliverance. I got a record-breaking healing. Oh, I know the doctor told you you was on the verge of this. You was almost about to have that. But can somebody shout, by his stripes, I am healed. It won't be long now. So here, the Bible begins to tell us. That this reward is not coming to those that have been lazy. And so I want to tell you something. Only what you do for Christ will last. 
I'm so sick of all of these Christians that want God to bless them, but they don't want to do nothing. It's time out for everybody want to give me, give me, give me. But when it's time for you to show God what you are capable of, we take a back seat. But it says, behold, the days are getting ready to come. That the plowman shall overtake the reaper. I want to tell you something. If I was you, I wouldn't be caught with my work undone. If I was you, I wouldn't be caught out here not doing what God assigned me to do. Understand that we don't know the day or the hour that God shall crack the sky. But I want to be ready when he calls. I want to be ready when my name is called on the Lamb's book of life. I want him to be able to say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And the only way that you can be able to obtain that reward, you must do the work that he have assigned you on earth. Understand that you have an obligation and you have a responsibility. And your responsibility is you didn't get saved to be quiet, but you got saved to help a dying world. You got saved to be able to tell somebody else that guess what? Jesus saves to the utmost. Oh, y'all not talking to me. Jesus saved. He will pick you up and turn you around. Oh, uh, just look at somebody and tell them, I know about that. Because he did it for me. I, I once was a wretch undone, sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but he reached way. Oh, y'all not talking to me. He reached way down just to pick me up. And so here it is. He encouraged them to tell them that I have a decree that I'm getting ready to bless those that put the work in. I'm getting ready to bless those that, watch this, was not selfish, but they relinquished who they were to show God that whatever it takes, I'm going to do whatever it takes because I understand to whom much is given. Oh, y'all not talking to me. I'm waiting for Gary to holler at me then. I'll preach. He says, to whom much is given, much is required. I don't understand this modernized church today is because everybody want a miracle, but don't nobody want to suffer. Oh, uh, every. Everybody wants to be able to say, I got this, I got that. But understand, there's a process. And if you are not processed right, you won't be blessed right. So he begins to tell them in the text, listen, the plowman. Understand, what is a plowman? That is somebody that prepares the ground for a harvest. That is somebody that gets out there and do the dirty work. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to get dirty. Uh, I know y'all so sophisticated and you got all your degrees and all your education. But can I tell you, it comes a time where you got to put that aside and you got to get dirty. Uh, come on, find somebody else and tell them you got to get dirty. So here he tells us that now that the plowman is out there doing the work. The plowman is preparing the way. Understand that the reason why that God called you is because he knew that you could be capable to do the work that he have assigned to you. So here it is. He said the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of the grapes of him that sow of seed. Understand my brothers and my dear sisters, I don't care how anointed you are, you going to reap what what you sow. Oh, I'm going to find a good 12 member church that's going to holler at me. Lights. Listen, you're going to reap what you sow. And so many times we as people, we get so caught up that when we hear that word sow, we think it's all about money. Listen, it's not all about money when you say sow. Understand, whatsoever man soweth, that's what he also shall reap. So you wonder why your life is the way it is. Look how mean you've been. Look how nasty you've been. Look how unreal you've been. Look how arrogant you've been. You're going to reap what you Look at somebody and tell them, say, be careful what you sow. Because you got a payday. Uh, be careful what you sow. 
Because understand that God pays all of us daily. And so he was letting them know, he says, listen, I want you to understand this. That yes, I'm going to bless you. But I need you to understand before the blessing, he has to see your due diligence while you've been going through the process. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Church is the only place where we want overnight wonders and overnight upgrades. Church is the only place that you come in on one week and then by the end of the week now you're talking about elevation. How is it that the world takes you through? The world system has a order, but we come to church and want things to happen out of order. Oh God, help me, help me, help me, help me. How is it that we want God, watch this, to break the rules for you, but you don't do nothing for him? How is it that you want God, watch this, to expedite your deliverance, but you can't even pray one hour? Oh, y'all not even talking to me. How in the world can you expect God to bring increase to you and you fail to pay your tithes? See, I, I, I don't understand that, listen... You can dance all night. You can shout all week. But you got to keep the main thing the main thing. You want to grow? Guess what? Stop stealing God's money. Oh, see, I, I know I only get three of y'all that's going to talk back to me. You wonder why your money funny and your change is strange because guess what? You're trying to short the tenth. Understand, he said, bring it to the storehouse so there be meat in my house. And watch this, not prove Pastor Wright, but prove him that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. The problem is you're looking to the wrong ones to bless you. You got to know who to look to, and that is Jesus. But he tells them, guess what? It won't be long now. And the reason why it won't be long now is because when you learn how to correctly position and posture yourself, understand that there is an order that God has as a believer for you to position yourself to be blessed. Yeah. Do anybody believe that you have to be in the right position for the blessing to come? Oh, y'all scam me. Let, me. let me ask you again. Do anybody believe that you have to be positioned? See, when you are out of place, you can't get what God wants you to have. But when you align yourself to the work of God and the will of God, and when you get yourself in spiritual alignment, listen, it's just like a car. Anybody ever drove a car that's out of alignment? Yeah. When you got a car that's out of alignment, it goes everywhere. It goes every which way. That's some of y'all lives. See, when you're out of spiritual alignment, you settle for anything. When you're out of spiritual alignment, you go for anything people say. But when you get aligned up with the work and the will of God, you become so determined that you say, I will not allow nothing to separate me from the love of God. I'm trying to find out, do I got any lovers here at Grace that say, come hell or high water, I won't let nothing separate me from the love of God. So here, he tells him, he says, listen, it won't be long now. And the reason why it won't be long now is because God never allows you to enter into anything that he does not have the blessing prepared for you. There's nothing that you go through that God don't see the end of it before you enter into it. Can I encourage you to let you know that God took your end just to write your beginning. So that means no matter how you start, that's not how you're going to finish. Because he tells us, watch this, it won't be long now because things are getting ready to happen so fast. I need you to get it in your spirit right now that God is getting ready to move for me quicker than quick, faster than fast. I need you to look at somebody and tell them it's getting ready to happen. Oh no, you didn't say it with an expectation. I need you to open up your mouth and say it's getting ready to happen. Come on, I need you to look at somebody eyeball to eyeball and tell them that's everything that you prayed about, that very thing that you fasted for, it's about 
to happen. Oh God, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to find out is there anybody that's catching on to faith right now that say that very thing that I've been expecting God to do. I wish I had some radical believers that can just get it in your mind to say before midnight tonight, something is about to happen in my favor. Oh y'all don't believe God can work miracles by midnight? I need you to witness to somebody and tell them by midnight Something good is about to happen to you. Because now he says it's getting ready to happen so fast that your head is getting ready to swim. One thing about God, God never allows you, never allows you to have troubles without victory. One thing about God, God never allows you to go through without giving you a promise. One thing about God, God never allows you to watch this endure hardness as a good soldier and not have a reward waiting for you. I need you to encourage yourself and tell yourself, I've been in the fight of my life. But I'm getting ready to come out with my hands lifted up. Come on, I need you to encourage yourself and tell yourself, yes, it been hard. Yes, it been difficult. But I'm getting ready to come out with a sweatless victory. I'm getting ready to come out, watch this, with an unstoppable favor. I'm getting ready to come out with healing that I've been asking for. I'm getting ready to come out with more than what I started with. Somebody they need to open up their mouth and shout there is more a sign to my life y'all don't believe it come on I need you to shout there's more a sign to my life matter of fact look down your row and tell that neighbor say neighbor if you don't understand by now you will never know that there is more a sign to your life so here he tell them, get ready, because now the miracle is going to chase you, and you're not going to chase it. Huh, I want to tell somebody tonight, this is your last time chasing a dollar, but money getting ready to chase you. Oh, yeah. I'm in the wrong place. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. Let me say it again. This is the last time that I'm going to chase money but money gonna chase me. Matter of fact, I need you to help me and shout, I'm a money magnet. Oh, see, 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 all the broke people, I can know where you at because you ain't open up your mouth. Right through your mask, those of you watching me virtually, I dare you put it in the chat room. I'm a money magnet. Come on, do I got some money magnets in here that say money come to me? Money is attracted to me. I'm a money magnet. Wherever the soles of my feet shall trod. Holy Brian, I'm a money magnet. Wherever I go, I am an atmosphere changer. I need you to understand tonight who you are and what God have made. God have made you to be an atmosphere changer. That when you show up, God shows up. Somebody need to catch it tonight. That understand, I don't need a crowd around me. But all I need is me and God, we got this. So here, he tells them, he says, listen. You won't be able to keep up. I came here to prophesy over this 31-year-old ministry that guess what? You won't be able to keep up. Things are about to happen in the lives of you tonight that God is trying to remind you that if you be faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many. Somebody shout, Lord, let it be me. So here, he tells him, he says, listen, things are getting ready to happen at once, just like that. I need you to snap your finger and shout, it's getting ready to happen. Just like that. Oh, see, so y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. Can I tell you something? 
what you've been waiting to happen three years is getting ready to happen in three months. Just like that. What you've been trying to get done in three months is getting ready to happen in three days. Just like that. I need you to snap your fingers and shout, good news is getting ready to find me. Oh, y'all act like y'all don't want no good news in here. Come on, I want you to shout, good news is getting ready to find my family. Good news is getting ready to find my ministry. Good news is getting ready to find my business. Somebody shout, I got good news, good news, good news, good news. Here, the reason why the good news is getting ready to come is because he says, I'm getting ready to put you in a season where everywhere you look, you're going to see nothing but blessings. I need to encourage somebody to tell you that God is getting ready to remove your eyesight and give you some vision. See, eyesight is only what you see before you, but vision allows you to see what's beyond. I want to encourage somebody to tell you that God is changing your perspective. And the reason that he's changing your perspective is because now he wants you to know that what I'm getting ready to do for you, nobody going to be able to get the credit or the glory. What I'm getting ready to do for you, nobody will be able to say, if it had not been for me, you wouldn't have got it. But is there anybody here tonight that say, I'm so glad that this is a God thing that God is about to do it God is about to flip it God is about to work it out it's a God thing it's a God thing you say what you mean prophet is a God thing this is how you can identify when it's a God creative miracle God creative miracles watch this it supersedes what man thought could not happen. A God move is a move that, watch this, your credit didn't match it, but your faith connected to it. Look at somebody and tell them, I may not have the money in my hand, but I got the faith to go get it. Oh, y'all, y'all. I'm, I'm going to find my 12-member church in a minute. My credit scores say that I can't have it. But my faith tells me all things are possible to him that believes. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a believer. So here, he lets them know that because you are a believer, because you are one that trust God when you can't trace him. Uh -huh. And because you are one that serve him, not per condition, but you serve him simply because you have a relationship. He says, now I'm getting ready to perform for you the manifestation you've been asking for. I'm getting ready to open up the door that no man can shut. I need you to get happy right now and shout, the doors are opening. <laughs> Y'all don't really sound like you want a door to open. But I need somebody to open up their mouth and shout, the doors are opening. Tell them the chains are falling. Oh, God is getting ready to drop what I need right in my hand. Is there anybody here on a triumphal Tuesday that say, I hear the sound of victory coming my way? Is there anybody here that, that say, I feel victory getting ready to come to me? Well, I got good news for you to tell you if you just hold on just a little while longer, things are getting ready to work. If you hold on just a little while longer, change is getting ready to come. Is there anybody here at Grace that still believes that there's still time left on the printed calendar for God to turn it around? Is there anybody here at Grace that say, I still believe in the power of my living God? Because it won't be long now that I'm going to see my family 
healed, have delivered, have and set free. Have. It won't be long now have, that I'm going to have, have just what I say have, because I have the authority have, to command have, my atmosphere. Have. I have the authority have, to walk into have, what I desire. Have. I need somebody have, to help me close here uh, and just get up on your feet uh, and just take two or three steps uh, and shout, I'm stepping out uh, and I'm stepping into uh, a brand new season. Uh, I'm stepping out uh, and I'm stepping into uh, a season of recovery. Uh, I'm stepping out uh, and I'm stepping into uh, a season uh, of greatness. I need y'all to help me real quick. And I need you to become like MC Hammer and just slide. Slide out of your fear. Slide out of your depression. Slide out of your doubt and shout, I'm moving. Look at somebody and tell them I'm moving. Because God is calling me. God is moving me to a higher place. Look at somebody. Tell them, neighbor, let's go higher. Tell them I can't stay here. Because there is something on the other side that has my name. There's something on the other side that's calling me. There's something uh, on the other side uh, that I got to get to. Uh, look at a neighbor uh, and tell them, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Uh, I'm on my way uh, to a new place. Uh, I'm on my way uh, to somewhere better. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Look that devil in the face and tell that devil this the last time you'll find me like this. This the last time I'll be broke, busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. This is the last time. Get out of my way. I need you to get out of your seat. Tell three people, huh? get out of my way. Get out of my way. I got somewhere I'm going. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I feel something getting ready to shift. I feel something getting ready to break. I feel something getting ready to loose. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Yeah. It's not through blessing you. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Sickness can't kill me. Divorce can't kill you. Get out of my way. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. It's getting ready to happen. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. I got to go home, y'all. But before I go, can I tell somebody that whatever you need, God got it. Whatever you ask for, you're about to receive it because his word don't lie. He said, if you delight yourself, 
He'll give you the desires of your heart. He also said, no weapon formed against me shall not prosper. I just want you to know here that it may form, but it won't work. And the reason that it won't work is because I'm covered, I'm covered. Just wrap your arms around yourself and shout, I'm covered, I'm covered. I got a head of protection all around me because the blood still works. Do anybody believe the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross still works because he stretched his arms, hung his head just for you and I. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for paying the price for me. Thank you. He that knew no sin became sin to take away the sins of the world. Thank you. Thank you. It won't be long now. He's going to give you the ability. He's going to give you the anointing. That he's going to reveal what the devil destroyed in your life. God says, I'm going to give you the power, watch this, to have it better than what you did before. The Lord sent me down here tonight to tell you, everything that the enemy killed the first time, he won't be able to kill it again. Because God says, I'm doing a new development in you. And I'm bringing a new development in your life. I'm going to watch this. It won't be long now. I'm getting ready to give you a record-breaking miracle to show you that where you thought you could not succeed, God says, now I'm going to give you uncommon favor. That I'm going to raise you up where they counted you out. You don't got to go to another state to get this miracle. You're going to get it right where you are. Somebody shout, right where I am is where God is about to do what I asked for. He's about to manifest right where I am. I don't have to go nowhere else. He's going to renew me, restore me, revive me right where I am. I want to tell you, Pastor Wright, Lady Wright, God going to do it right where you are. This is a season of your life that you must understand. I ain't running from nothing. I'm talking to somebody. You thought that you had to run. You thought you had to hide. You thought you had to leave. No, I'm going to tell you something. God, get ready to do it right where you are. And Isaac sowed in that land. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold return. And watch this, the Bible tells us, and he waxed great, and he blessed them there. Say to yourself, I'm not running from nothing no longer, but I'm going to plant myself so I can receive the maximum blessing. Tell somebody, no more minimizing me. God is about to maximize everything around me. Oh, I thought y'all knew when to praise. Y'all act like y'all don't know when to praise. Listen, 
I said, no more. No longer you shall be minimized. But God is getting ready to maximize you right where you are. Lift holy hands all over this house. He's getting ready to do it. Right where I am. He's getting ready to do it. Right in the face of those that had private conversations for your public disappointment. I heard God saying, I'm getting ready to reverse what they met on saying that you won't going to make it. You couldn't get the business. You couldn't succeed. But God says, I'm getting ready to maximize you right in the face of those that thought you was never going to rise. But with your hands uplifted all over this house, this is for worshipers. I need every worshiper To begin to thank God that your disappointment did not kill you. But your disappointment made you better. Come on. Come on. Lift your hands and open up your mouth. Because guess what? You did not see it coming. But God allowed you to go through it. He took you through it. He took you through it just so you can realize and understand that no matter what the devil have tried to speak against your life, the Lord sent me here to tell you that it won't end like this. Tonight we're serving notice on the devil. We're, watch this. We are giving the benediction to what they thought they gave a benediction to you. You're serving notice that guess what? It's canceled. The plot, the plan of the enemy has been canceled. Somebody shout, it's been canceled. It's been canceled. It's been canceled. It's been counseled. Come on, I thank God. Let's honor God for Bishop Albert Jameson. Thank God for my brother, Pastor Jonathan Willis. Let's bless God for him. While you're in that spirit of worship, I want you to understand that total cancellation has come to your life. God has counseled out everything that the enemy ever thought that he could ever do to you. It won't be long now. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is showing you that I am your provider. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is teaching you right now that it's according to your faith. Let me tell you something. Faith without works is dead. You got to have enough faith to know that if God allow me to go to it, he's going to give me the power to come through it. Somebody shout, I'm coming through this. You're coming out of that place of grief. You're coming out of that place of frustration. You're coming out of that place of fear. And the reason why I'm coming out is because I understand who I am. I understand who I'm serving. Somebody shout, God is on my side. Come on, I need you to say it like you mean it. God is on my side. The reason that God is on my side is because I never allow, watch this, my condition determine the future that God have already written for my life. I just came to tell you, your future is much better than the suffering you've been through. Your future, come on, I need you just to get it in your eyes that my future is brighter 
My future is better. Because guess what? I caught a glimpse. Understand that when you catch a glimpse, that means, guess what? It's not as bad as I think it is. And the reason why it's not as bad as I think it is is because, guess what? God specializes in working out things that man have given up. And man have told you that it won't work. I came to talk to some people that feel like you've been the underdog. I came to talk to some people that feel like, guess what? It seems like I've always been getting the crumbs from the bottom. But I need you to get it in your spirit. I'm shifting from where I am. I'm coming out of from this place of shortage. And I'm moving to more than enough. Come on, shout more than enough. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you really got an expectation. Say more than enough. I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to go around talking about what I don't have. Because guess what? My faith tells me I got just what I want. Because you have to learn how to speak those things that be not as though they were. See, faith teach me this. I need to release my belief to bring what I want visible. How many of you believe tonight that God is going, watch this, what you can't see, he's getting ready to bring it to your vision. Because my faith goes and tells me that guess what? I'm getting ready to get it all back. And the reason why I'm getting ready to get it all back because I'm going to do something I never done to get a result I never had. How many of you tonight believe God that guess what? In a record breaking time. See, I, I want you to know that it's going to happen so fast, you're going to have to say, Lord, this had to be you. Lord, this had to be you because guess what? Your timing is never God's timing. Your ways are never God's ways. But God know how. Watch this. To bring what you want right before you. I want you right now at this very moment. This is a serious moment. This is a serious moment because it, God is turning around what the devil thought wasn't going to work for you. Somebody shout, this is my turnaround time. Oh, you, no, you didn't say it like you really mean to say it. Come on, this is my turnaround time. I want you to know it's getting ready to turn around in your family. It's getting ready to turn around in your career. It's getting ready to turn around in your business. It's getting ready to turn around in your family. And the reason that it's getting ready to turn around is because I believe God. I believe God. All of you that believe God, I want you to open up your mouth and shout, I believe God. It won't always be like this. How many of you believe it? The Lord will perfect that concern me. me. Hallelujah. Sooner or later, going to work in my favor. It's turning around. Come on, I want to say that again. Help me, Minister Will. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that to concern me, me. So no later, it'll turn.
listen, tonight is my last night. I want to speak to you in faith. Not doubt, but in faith. Somebody shout in faith. I want to challenge three of you tonight. Three. There's three of you tonight. I want you to hear me. There's three of you tonight. I want you to get a seed of $331. There's three of you that you can't play with this. You have to obey God and sow this seed of 331. And the reason that you got to sow this seed of $331 is because this is a seed that God is getting ready to open the unexpected. God is getting ready to perform. Watch this. What you couldn't do for yourself, God is getting ready to show you. That as you move into this level of faith, now I'm going to tell you something. $331 is not a lot of money. But $331 in the hand of God moves what you can't move on your own. There's three of you. Now let's, let me tell you this. I don't play with my gift because I've watched many people that have sown as I have spoken. I have received testimonies, countless testimonies of how God performed the miracle. But there's three of you tonight that you must sow that seed of $331. Then I want to challenge seven of you to get a seed of $77. I'm going to sow that seed of $331. There's two more of you. I want you to come by your faith. They say, you know what? Whether you got to swipe, whether you got to give it by cash out. This is one thing that I do believe, that if you can swipe to go into debt, you can swipe to come out of debt. But I hear you, Holy Ghost. There's one of you, you're not at the 331, but there's one of you tonight, you must release a seed of $1,000. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you sow at that $1,000 level, that is a level that breaks limitation off your life. That is a level that breaks, watch this, the ceiling of where the enemy have tried to keep you limited. There's one of you, I'm here to tell you, that when you sow this seed of $1,000, it's not for you, but it's for your legacy. Somebody shout, my legacy. There's one of you, you're watching online, you need to get your seed in the ground. Cash out, Zell, however. But I want those that's going to be obedient. I'm waiting for those two that's going to sow that seed of 331. I want you to move now. I want you to move now. I want you to come. There's two more of you tonight that say, you know what? I'm sowing by my faith. Understand that, listen, faith can get what doubt can't bring. Let me say it again. Faith can get what doubt cannot bring. I want you, there's two of you, I want you to get that seed of 331, and I want those seven to get that seed of $77. But that one, I'm here to tell you, you obey God tonight because when you sow this seed of 1,000, this is for your legacy. I want you to bow your head right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that as they move by their faith, those that are watching online, those that are in person, Father, I decree and I declare that a seed that leave their hand never shall leave their life. Thank you, because it's about to come to pass. Thank you right now, because the testimony would be, I trust God, and God worked it out for my good. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want you to come from all over, wherever you're coming from. If you're giving by Cash App, what is the Cash App name? If you're giving by Cash App, it is dollar sign, New Grace tab. And if you're giving by Zale, 14 at gmail.com. You heard it. 
Pastor Dave 14. I want you, I want you to come. As you are getting your seat prepared, thank you so much, Bishop Jameson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bishop. Come on, let's clap our hands for Bishop Jameson, Pastor Willis. I want you to move by your faith. I want you to move by your faith. I want you to get your, get your seed and I want you to get in this line and I want to release this blessing over all of you that sows into this word. It should never be a time that you hear a word and you don't activate it by sowing into your word, sowing into what God is about to do for you. Those of you that are watching online, you can participate. I believe, listen, I can believe 30 of you can get that seed of $77 and you can sow cash out new grace tab or you can go to zell pastor dave 14 at gmail.com i want you to get that seed and i want you to move by faith i want everyone to get something in your hand and come get in this line i want you to get something in your hand get the best seed come on let's move by faith and watch this obedience is better than sacrifice i want you to get that seed and we're trusting god we're trusting god we're trusting god hallelujah thank you Thank you. Thank you. I thank you that you're moving. I thank you. Those of you watching online, I appreciate you moving. I appreciate you going right now and sowing. And as you're sowing, I want you to know that you can look for the miracle. You can look for the blessing. You can look for the reward. All of you that are sowing, I want you to put your seed in your right hand. And I want you to speak these words. I want you to say, here I go. Trusting God again. Here I go. Sowing with a great expectation. I believe God. I want to tell you tonight that one, you're here. You want to do something else, but I'm hearing you in the Holy Ghost. You're wrestling. Listen, I take the wrestle out of your spirit. You're supposed to sow that 1,000. You say, well, how, how do I know it's me? It's because I'm going to tell you something. There's a pool in your spirit. You got to obey God. Don't fight this moment. You're going to be able to trace your miracle back to this very moment. I know what God told me in prayer. He said, this is a seed for your legacy. This is a seed that I'm telling you. When you release this seed, whether you got a sword on your card, whether you got to move something around, let me tell you something. This seed is going to open the door that you've been asking God to do. Understand that when you sow, that sowing opens up what you can't open up on your own. While you're moving and coming in this line, I'm going to tell you something. I was in a place where I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't mind telling my testimony because you know what, brother? My friend and my brother, Pastor David Wright, stood with me. I went through a divorce that I thought was going to kill me. Because you know the church people turn on you when you get divorced. Oh, I don't mess. See, listen, I'm over how you feel now. I'm blessed. Doc, I went through a season where from preaching all across the country, out of 52 weeks a year, I was moving 48 weeks. I went from traveling nowhere, went to being homeless, living in the Crown Plaza Hotel. I said, Lord, how in the world can I go all across the country and preach and all of a sudden go through a divorce? Nobody want to call me to preach. I couldn't find nobody to buy me a sandwich. I was living in the Crown Plaza Hotel and I said, God, better days got to come out of this. The Lord spoke to me and said, listen, I want you to sow $1,000. I said, Lord, are you crazy? You want me to sow $1,000? I'm sitting here, I'm paying 400 and some odd dollars a week to live in this hotel. And you want me to give $1,000? Doc, I, yeah, I was battling with him. I said, hold up. I got to have food. I got to have gas. The Lord said, I want you to sow $1,000. I said, Lord, how in the world am I going to do this? Mother White, I began 
to go into every savings, you know, I mean everything. You know how when you wrap the coins up, oh see, oh y'all ain't never been, see I, I, I've been in a rough place. I start going to get the coins. Gary, I went to the grocery store, so you know they got the coin machine where you can dump, oh see y'all are like, I'm being real. I, I went there, Lady G dumped out everything I had. And by the time I gathered all the money, it was exactly $1,000. I said, Lord, now if I get this down and it get worse than what it is, I got a problem. Mother White, the Lord told me, shut up and give the $1,000. I sold that $1,000 not knowing what was going to happen. Church had shut down. Preaching has shut down. No income. And I watched God. Watch this. I sold a thousand dollars and I began to pray. I said, Lord, I'm going to do what you say. I sold a thousand dollars. And I watched. In three months, God began to open up doors that I knew I had. To, if the people that told me that they'll never preach me was begging me to come back to preach for them. The Lord, watch this, I went from being homeless that the Lord had a friend of mine to call me and say, hey man, I got a house over here that I need somebody just to occupy. I said, well, man, what you asking for? He said, I didn't ask you for anything. I said, I need you to occupy. I said, well, okay, cool, I'll occupy. Not knowing when I got to the house, it was a half a million dollar house. God took me, watch this, from driving a cab See, I, I'm not afraid to tell you where I come from. I pick you up in it, that's right. Not a shame. Pick Pastor right up in it. I went from driving the cab, because guess what? I ain't had no car. My cab was the car. The Lord took me from driving a cab, living in a hotel, put me in my heart's desire. The Lord blessed me with vehicles that yeah, guess what? All I had to do was just remain faithful. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you remember when I challenged you to sow that thousand? Let me tell you something. Some of you think that I got to hold on to it. I was at that place. Yeah, I was at that place. Mother White, I was at that place where I said, hmm, you ain't going to get my last thousand. But the Lord spoke to me and said, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. I want to tell you something. I went from being broke to God putting me into plenty. And I'm not saying this because guess what? I'm trying to get something out you. No, I'm trying to get something to you. Right. I'm trying to get, listen, I'm trying to break the level of poverty that the enemy wants to keep you bound. I went from going to the dollar menu. Ain't nothing wrong with the dollar menu, but I was hitting it up, Gary. That double cheese, that was my friend. Oh, see ya. Uh, don't mess with that double cheeseburger, fry. That was my friend. The Lord took me from the dollar menu so that I can eat whatever I want, when I want. Don't have to think about whether, oh, I can't get this. No, I, listen, I've been where you are. But I'm going to tell you, the only way to come out, you got to do something you've never done. And I'm telling you tonight, those of you that saw in that 331, watch. You that saw on that thousand, watch. You that saw on that 77. I decree and I declare the same anointing and the same prosperity that God has placed over my life. I speak it on you tonight that as you be obedient, and I'm going to tell you, there's some of you, you're still fighting with this, but if I was you, I wouldn't fight with it. I know you put this money aside and you say, this is for the rainy day. The rainy day is here. Can I tell you something? God know what you need when you need it. So as you obey God, those of you watching online, as you obey God, you're going to see this happen. I want you to shout, record breaking, financial miracles are coming to me. Now I need you to turn around to somebody in this line and tell them, record breaking, financial miracles is coming to you. Father, I seal it in the name of Jesus.
Father, I thank you for the testimonies that shall come even after I'm gone. I thank you for the houses that they shall get, the cars that shall be granted, the promotion that shall be released even after I'm gone. I decree and I declare that the power of God shall manifest mightily in Jesus' name. When you come past me, I want you just to touch my hand, whatever your card, your money, and I want you to say one thing. I want you to say harvest. Amen? Come on, come on. Harvest. 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 Where the basket? Harvest. 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 Listen, I grew up in the old school church. Even if you don't got nothing but got a heart to give, still come touch my hand and say harvest. Harvest. I want you to obey God. Harvest. Harvest. Wherever you are, come, come. Harvest. 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 I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Harvest. 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 Yes, Lord. Harvest. 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 Brian. I just hear that good old Luther Barnes. I am so satisfied. I am so satisfied with my Savior. Yeah. He means more to me than anything, anything that this world could ever offer. Gary, let me tell you something. I decree and I declare. I'm going to tell you, the standstill that you have been in, concerning business. There are some business opportunities that you have been seeking God about the next move or what you should be doing because you have your hands in a lot of things but it's not yielding forth the return that you have put in. The Lord says to tell you tonight that there will be no more wasted investments. You hear me? There would be no more wasted investments. And also, God says, you have been serving, but being overlooked. You have been the one doing the work behind the scenes. Where people, watch this, they see you, but they really don't know the power and the force that come behind you. Because when you put your hands to something, put your mind to it, you all the way in. But I want you to know that tonight, God is going to restore unto you. There's two major areas that God is getting ready to restore. Your health, and he's getting ready to restore your business. I want you to know, your business is getting ready to bounce back better than it ever have before. The Lord told me to tell you, tonight is a night where he ends the loss, and he opened up the heavens that will pour you out favor. I speak favor. I speak favor. Tonight, you're not going to leave here with this stress and this worry that you've been carrying. God says, I heard you the first time when you prayed. I decree and I declare by the power of the living God that, God, you will lift the burden up off him. Lift the pain in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray that you shall have rest because you ain't been able to rest because this thing been on your mind. But I'm going to tell you something. The Lord says, take it to the Lord in prayer and leave it. Leave it at the altar tonight. Leave it at the altar. I want you to watch. Not many days since from this very moment, you're going to call Pastor Wright and tell him, God turned it around and he worked it out for my good. The Lord says, tell you the report is being reversed. I don't care what was before you got here, but God says, I'm reversing the report and the victory shall be yours. Somebody just point to him, tell him it's already done. It's already done, it's already done, it's already done. Y'all swipe my card for 331. 
I won't be uh, guilty of y'all saying he asked me, but he ain't give. I ain't one of those type of preachers. Hello, somebody. But I thank you. Listen, I thank you and I appreciate all of you so much. And I want y'all to do me a favor. I want you to do me a favor. Listen, in the day and time that we live in, we need to honor and love our leaders. Let me say it again. In the day and time that we live in, we need to honor our leaders. And the reason that we have to honor our leaders is because they are up under so much pressure and stress. None of us been in a pandemic before, but guess what? We are learning how to weather the storm. And the only way that, watch this, the church can be what God have called it to be, it takes people that's united with the vision. Hello, somebody. I need y'all to encourage those ones that want to stay home. Listen, COVID is in Walmart like it is in Macy's. Oh, don't, don't, come on, don't do that to me. Don't, don't. You sit in a beauty salon, COVID is right there under the hair dryer with you. So let's, let's not act like we can't come to church. Hello, somebody. Let's act like we can't support. Listen. I don't care if COVID or no COVID. Some of you got more money in COVID than you have had in your whole life. Y'all done opened up businesses that you never had. Don't talk. Oh, so y'all want to get quiet. This ain't nothing that Pastor Wright or Lady Wright told me to say, listen, I feel led of the Lord to encourage you tonight. So listen, if you for this ministry, be with this ministry. If you love your leader, don't let nobody talk about your leader. I got a rule. I got a rule that I live by. Anybody that's with me that can talk about me, you ain't for me. So therefore, guess what? I don't need you around me. I don't need you to hang around me just because you, you think you can benefit from me. No. If you with the man of God and the woman of God, now I'm going to say it publicly so y'all can hear me say it. What I can say privately, I can say publicly. I told her standing at the doorway. Leaving in here last night, the Lord told me, he said, watch, in the first three years of her business opening, that I'm getting ready to do something supernatural. So don't get funny with First Lady. But everybody in here need to be rallying along to support her vision. Yeah. Everybody, listen, I don't care if you don't eat sweets. I'm a diabetic, guess what? I'm going to eat some sweets. Hello, somebody. Let's not, listen, let's not allow our fellow brothers and sisters go in business and we can't support them. If we don't support one another, who will? Her business is going to take off. And I want you to know this. Whether you support or not, God's hand is on it. So don't think for one moment if you don't get a cake or a cookie, she ain't going to make it. Oh, see so y'all. I stand with them. I stand with Pastor Wright because you know what? He stood with me. He didn't let me fall. Pastor Wright will call me. He sent me money. See, a friend stick of closer than a brother. This man, he did not allow me to go hungry. And when you, know, when you find real people like that, guess what? Hold them up. Hold them up. Grace, I congratulate you on 31 years that God have kept you the 31st church anniversary. But I want you to know that God loves you, and so do I. All over this house, I want you to stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, remember to the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on a solid ground. If you're here and you don't know this Jesus that I talked about, I want to introduce you to him. It is simple as one, two, three, A, B, C. If you are here today, that was my first plea. 
But here's my second plea. If you're here tonight and you say, you know what? I want to renew my relationship with the Lord. Pastor, I know I have fallen by the wayside, but I want to make a new commitment tonight. If you're here tonight and say, you know what? I want to be renewed. I don't care how long you've been saved. We all are sinners saved by grace. But if you're here tonight and you say, you know what? I want to refresh, renew, revive my relationship. I want you to come down here to the altar. I want to pray with you. If you're here and you say, you know what? I, I want to renew myself with God. I, I want to renew myself. You know, I fell out of touch. Listen, we, we sometimes falls out of touch. If you're here and you want to make that renewance, you want to make that commitment, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Come out of that row. Come out of that pew. I believe God that he's going to do it. Now, every head bow, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for these, your people. Father, I pronounce a blessing over this house. I pronounce, God, that they should be healthy, wealthy, and successful. I speak no lack shall be. I speak great abundance. That, God, you shall release that which they have been asking you for. And I praise you because it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Help me by clapping your hands and let's receive our pastor. Pastor David Wright. To the utmost, Jesus says, He will take you and turn you around. Hallelujah, oh Lord, Jesus say, one more time, to the utmost, Jesus say, to the utmost, Jesus say, he will take and turn you around hallelujah hallelujah I wish somebody to get on your feet and help me this hallelujah hallelujah one more time hallelujah Jesus said, somebody clap your hands and give God a praise. I'm saved by his power, the blood, saved by new life, the blood, life now is sweet. And my joy is complete for I'm saved, 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 Anybody glad you're saved? Can you say that one time for me, Will? I'm saved. By his, power, by his power divine, I'm saved, saved by new life, the blind, life now is sweet, life now and my joy is complete, all I'm saved, 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 Somebody give them glory. The joy of salvation. Come on here, somebody. Just look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I'm saved. Hey.
Hallelujah. We thank God for Prophet White. Clap your hands for my friend, my brother. Oh, my Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm saved. When you say you treat people right. Yeah, Lord. Life now is sweet. I'm trying to get out of here. But my joy is complete. Oh, hey. Hey. I wish I had somebody on this side just to lift your hands and say, I'm saved. Yeah. Yee. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. My God. Don't you know if some stuff just gonna come your way just because you're saved? I ain't perfect, but I am saved. I don't cross every T and dot every I, but I am saved. My, my, my. We're going to go. We're going to roll. We're going to roll. I remember when Prophet White, when he was driving the cab, and people had counted him out. Listen, don't let nobody count you out, especially when you're saved. Because any time you've been counted out, there's a great comeback awaiting you. Somebody right now has been counted out. But I'm going to tell you, there's a great comeback. There's a great comeback, I'm telling you. Woo! This ain't the first time you've been down and out. This ain't the first time you've been counted out. But there's a comeback coming. Somebody slap your neighbor and say, I'm about to make a comeback. I'm about to make a comeback. Right there. Yeah. Oh, oh. Did a great comeback. They counted you out. But God didn't count you out. He counted you in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great comeback! Yeah! That's 
It's all right, you can count me out. But you can't kill a praiser. You can't kill a praiser. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm making a comeback. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Point at somebody across the way. Tell them it ain't over yet. Mr. Lynn Robinson, you are my spirit. It ain't over yet. Did a great comeback. It ain't over yet. going to bring you double of everything you lost because I looked at today's date today the 28th is today the 28th eight is the number of new beginnings two means double tonight you get ready to come back with double of everything that you lost. Overflow getting ready to hit your house. Overflow getting ready to hit your family. Overflow getting ready to hit your life. Here come my 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 no more horse. Yes, God. to go. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Yes, Lord. He does that. He don't need music. He just keep going. But if you knew his story, when the devil tried all he could to stop Eric from getting that apartment, y'all remember? And he kept running around this church. Come on, y'all remember? And he kept running around until God blessed him with the with a better apartment than he was supposed to get. You gotta keep praising God while you wait. And, I, and we get ready to go. Just whisper this to somebody. While I'm waiting, I'm going to keep praising. Tell somebody else, while I'm waiting, I'm going to keep praising.
somebody shout hallelujah. You'll never be the same after tonight. You'll never be the same. I'm waiting on God to do something. I'm, I, I decree it. I decree it. It's going to happen. I'm waiting on him to do something. I sold out of a hard place tonight. And I believe God going to do. I believe that even right now while I'm standing here, the people that are in control of what I need to do is working right now. Yes, sir. Because I got some money tied up in, in some other places where it ain't nighttime, it's the middle of the day over there. It's first thing in the morning over there. My Lord. And everything I need. It's already done. All right. We got to go, it's getting late. Oh, oh, oh. You don't know what he needs, but why don't you pray God for it? Somebody shout hallelujah. All right. Jai, all right, Jai. All right. That's the breakthrough. That's a breakthrough.
your wife. Go ahead and rejoice. It's already done. Go ahead and rejoice. It's already done. church anniversary amen anybody glad for 31 years mm. hallelujah and I, I thank God for my wife first lady right yeah. and not that I thank God not only that I thank God for the founder the late co-pastor Betty Wright and the late Reverend Timothy Wright my daddy and my mama I thank God for their legacy. Legacy never dies. It always gets passed on. And when people go on to be with the Lord, you ain't got to fight for a mantle. Oh, Lord, help me. Amen. And I thank God for my father started this ministry back in 1990 in September with seven people in the living room of our one-bedroom apartment, 1A, 162 Colding Avenue. And God blessed us to be still standing here 31 years later. Many ups, many downs, but we kept trusting in the Lord. Not many churches can go through losing a pastor and co-pastor at the same time and still stand. Come on here, somebody. I know churches right now, their pastor gone and they had, they, the church fell. Amen. So God's been good to Grace Tabernacle. Hallelujah. And again, I thank God for my friend and my brother, Pastor Monty White, anointed man of God. And you, you will have a testimony. You will have a testimony. We're getting ready to go. We got some soda in the back. You want to take a soda or a bottle of water with you? They said, Pastor, it should be a dollar. I said, no, we're going to give them a soda. Amen. That'll help you on your way home, give you some strength for tomorrow. Let's be prayerful for our health care workers and our school teachers. Some of them are faced with some horrible decisions in these next coming days it's shameful what's happening and, and I'm not you know a lot of people scared to say something about it I, I'll say it's shameful to force people to do something it's a shame amen and I'll say this and I stand on it if you get the vaccine you are gonna need Jesus if you don't get the vaccine you are gonna need Jesus Amen. Either way, you're going to need Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's keep, let's, let's stop that division of who's vaccinated and who's not vaccinated. As long as you got Jesus. Amen. Because you can go get the vaccine and walk out and get hit by a truck. 
One thing I know they ain't gonna ask when you get to heaven's gates, are you vaccinated or not? Hallelujah. Amen. You need Jesus. So that's, that's my stand. I'm not pro, I'm not anti, I'm pro Jesus. I'm pro Jesus. If you feel sick, don't come here. This ain't the season. Uh, Pastor, I'm gonna press my way. Uh, no, 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 no. This ain't that season. <laughs> hey man, this is not that season to press your way through the uh, 100. I got a fever, Pastor, but I'm coming. No. Hallelujah. Even Jesus had sense enough to deal with that because he didn't lay hands on the lepers. He said, stay over there. Go thy way, y'all. Go show yourself to the priest. Amen. And after one of them got his healing, then he came. Y'all don't want to talk back to pastor, right? Amen. So let's be wise in all things that we do. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand and be dismissed. Friday night, Pastor Jay Gooden will be with us. I thank God for Pastor Jay Gooden. One of our, he's been coming to us for almost every, of the, every year of the 31 years. Bishop Jameson came in here on us and snuck in on us tonight, y'all. Amen. I thank God for the fathers and for the mentors that have been in my life. And again, First Lady Wright is opening her business this Saturday. Yeah! G Light Sweet Shop. Amen. We was there. We was there today because certain part. All she. All I want her to worry about is the bacon. I can't do that. But all the other stuff. I don't. McCray, you be proud of me. I don't put towels up and all that stuff. Tell them, sweetie. Tell them. Taught me well. I cut. I was cutting it and everything. You saw it. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I put shells up. Yes, it did. And it ain't fell down yet. <laughs> and we passed the inspection today. We had some open pipes. They said you got to put caps on them. I said I get it. Yes, and I got the cap. Didn't I get the cap? Amen. You don't have a pastor that don't mind getting his hands dirty. I'm going to say this, because that light bulb was out for the longest. I, you can check the last four lives. The last four weeks of live service. And magically, the light bulb works today. Amen. The Holy Ghost is something. You just look at it and then it came. No, that's not what happened. Somebody got on a ladder and changed that light bulb. Amen. Amen. I love it. Amen. Me, me and Deacon McCray, we was here. Remember the thing fell down? And me and you put the sheetrock up on the roof. Thank God for a pastor that don't mind working. But it'd be a shame if the pastor work in the... Yeah. I'll stay off the ladder if some other folks besides Deacon McCray get on the ladder. All right. Y'all started this. Y'all started me up. Hey Amen. Leave me alone. I'm going home. Hey Amen. We might go to Farmer in the Deli. I took them to Farmer in the Deli last night. All right, come on, we got to go. <laughs> he about to see God. Hey Amen. Come on, we're standing to our feet. We're going home. God bless you. Some of you I haven't seen. It's, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Sister Walker. Good to see you, Sister Davis. It's good to see you, Terrell. Good to see you, Sister Yolanda. Yolanda, remember when I was, she helped me teach me how to play basketball. Amen. 
And we thank God that God has been good and kind to you. If you're still alive in this season, God wants you to be alive. Amen. There's purpose in your life. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your anointing that's yet saturated in this room. We pray right now that the same anointing that's in this room be in our homes when we get there and to our separate destinations. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We bind up crooked cops, muggers, and robbers, and anything that's not like you. We bind up every stray bullet right now. We bind up every attacker right now. And when we get home and we see that all as well, we give your name more glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say thank God. Amen. Go in peace.